Hey y'all, bienvenidos. Welcome to my kitchen here in Houston. Today I have a really fun video planned for you. We're gonna be making a Puerto Rican classic mofongo. We're gonna make a loaded mofongo though, so we're gonna have some textured vegetable protein that I'll go over the recipe for in a little bit. We're also gonna be making some vegan cheese to stuff in our mofongo. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's go ahead and get started. The full recipe for our loaded mofongo is gonna be on my blog at curevegan.com. One of the first steps that you need to do to prepare your sin carne or your no meat mixture for our mofongo is we need to rehydrate our textured vegetable protein. So what textured vegetable protein is, is it's a soy flour product that comes dehydrated into little crumbles, different sizes. You can buy it in sizes that are like beef and broccoli size chunks or smaller like ground sizes like this. So it has no flavor, it's just that soy flour. So you have to rehydrate it with a marinade. So today I made a picadillo style marinade. There's some veggie broth, jalapenos, red onion, garlic, cumin, chili powder, you name it, it's in the bag. This needs to marinate for about four to six hours. I let mine sit overnight so it'll be super yummy. And we'll talk more about how to cook this in a minute. So today for our loaded mofongo, we are gonna be making some golden cheddar. It's gonna be a block cheese, so we're gonna let it set in the fridge or the freezer to harden up a little bit, and then we can slice or grate it for our mofongo. So to make this, it's a little bit sciencey. You're gonna need to buy some ingredients probably off of Amazon. The two ingredients specifically that I'm talking about that you need that aren't at every grocery store are tapioca starch or flour and then kappa carrageenan. These are both gonna be emulsifiers, thickening agents that kinda set our cheese up and make it firm into a block. So to our blender here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some fresh almond milk that I made. It's really important with homemade vegan cheeses that you use fresh almond or soy milk because store-bought almonds and soy milk, they have a lot of emulsifiers, preservatives in them. That's gonna cause your cheese sauce to break, okay? So this is literally just almond flour, water, and a little bit of salt blended together. That's gonna go into my blender. The next thing I'm gonna add in is gonna be some of my flavoring agents for the cheese. So I have some miso paste here. I have tomato paste, nooch, onion powder, salt, and mustard seeds. And nooch, I realized I said that without kind of explaining what it is. This is nutritional yeast, okay? Much different from brewer's yeast, so no, they're not the same thing. Nutritional yeast has a really cheesy flavor. So all these spices, flavoring agents, they're gonna go in. Next into the blender, I'm gonna throw in my tapioca starch and my kappa carrageenan. The only two other ingredients I have to add to my cheese sauce are gonna be apple cider vinegar and coconut oil. The coconut oil will add in when we begin cooking it and the apple cider vinegar will be the last thing we add in because it's an acid so it can curdle our milk and cause it to lump up if we add it too soon. All my flavoring agents in my milk as well as my emulsifiers are in the blender. Let's go ahead and turn it on until it all blends together. All right guys, that looks good. If I let my blender go for too long, it'll start cooking the cheese for me. So now that everything's mixed together, it's a nice cohesive kind of um, liquid in there. Let's go ahead and add it to our saucepan. The heat is over a medium high, so about a five and a half, a six on a scale of one to 10. I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of the coconut oil now. Now the coconut oil is gonna be separate from the mixture to start. But once it heats up a little bit more, that's when it's gonna start all coming together, making one nice, beautiful, cheesy mixture for us. And you'll notice that once you keep stirring and it starts to heat up, that that coconut oil is gonna start to uh, kind of emulsify with the other ingredients or come together with the other ingredients. Now we're gonna stir here until our cheese sauce actually starts to get like cheesy on us. It's gonna start to clump a little bit. Then you're gonna start to stir really quickly pulling it off of the heat if it starts to clump too much. And then once your cheese is pulling away from the sides of the pan almost as a block, like a ball of dough would, that's when we're gonna pour, pull it off of the heat and pour it into our mold. Today for a mold, I'm just gonna be using a Pyrex dish. So this whole process for the cheese making, cooking it, it should take anywhere from five to 10 minutes. 
It's not too long, but it's definitely not too quick. And if you don't cook it long enough, you'll have raw starch particles from that tapioca in there. You'll be able to taste them even after the cheese heats and cools. So you wanna make sure that you cook it enough to kind of dissipate that tapioca starch into the liquids of the mixture. It's starting to pull away from the edges and little clumps are forming. So at this point, you're gonna start moving your cheese on and off of the heat, kind of giving it a nice vigorous stir to make sure to break up any of those larger lumps. All right guys, our cheese is looking awesome now. It's pulling away from the sides of the pan pretty easily. Now we're gonna go ahead and take it off the heat and we're gonna add in our apple cider vinegar. As soon as we add this in, we need to stir pretty quickly. Apple cider vinegar is in and we stir, stir, stir. And into our mold this goes. You'll notice our cheese is already kind of starting to set, getting much thicker in here. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the fridge and that will allow it to actually get harder and set into that block that we can cut or then shred for our loaded mofongo. So our Sin Carne mixture has been marinating for overnight, so about eight to 12 hours. Textured vegetable protein, some veggie broth, cilantro, cumin, coriander, chili powder, orange zest, juice and rinds, lime juice and rinds, jalapenos. There's all sorts of yumminess going on in here. So we're gonna go ahead and strain this mixture. Now that we've rehydrated our textured vegetable protein, we need to kind of cook it down so that it doesn't just taste like wet flour, right? So I have my nonstick skillet. I'm gonna go ahead and add just about two tablespoons of oil and let that heat up. The pan is nice and hot. I've heated it over a medium high heat. I'm on a seven out of 10. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of this textured vegetable protein mixture and get to cooking it. In there with the jalapenos, the onions, the cilantro, all of it's going in. We're just gonna let this cook down, stirring it every minute or so. The one ingredient you can't miss out on when you're making mofongo is green plantains. These are really high in starch and fiber, so they can't be eaten raw like their look-alike cousin, the banana, okay? So to start with our plantains for mofongo, we're gonna go ahead and cut them into one inch pieces like this. To cut your plantain, we're gonna go ahead and cut off the ends first, then we're gonna make some slits in the skin. Once you have those slits, go ahead and work your fingers underneath the skin of the plantain. And then you can start peeling off that skin. Once you have that skin peeled off, go ahead and cut your plantain into about one inch pieces. And then set them aside for frying here in just a little bit. Our Sin Carne mixture is starting to develop some really nice brown color. And of course, if too much is sticking to the pan, go ahead and add a little bit more of that grapeseed oil. Stirring every 45 seconds to a minute still, we wanna develop that really nice crunchy color and uh, crunchy texture. So today we're frying in my cast iron skillet using grapeseed oil. How do you know when your oil is ready to fry with if you don't have a thermometer? You can take a wooden spatula or spoon and stick the handle into it. If you see little bubbles form around the spoon just like that, then your oil has reached frying temperatures, okay? If you have a thermometer, that's awesome. Frying temperatures are anywhere 325 to 375, so 350 is really your sweet spot. I'm gonna go ahead and just start dropping the plantains into the hot oil. Now when you cook your plantains like this, you want the oil to go up about halfway on your plantains. So I'm happy with the way my plantains have turned out. I'm not gonna drain them because I need some of this oil for when I start mashing my plantains. In front of me, I have what's known as a mortar and pestle or a mocajete. So we're gonna mash our plantains with some fresh garlic some sea salt, and then typically in this recipe for mofongo, there would be chicharrones for a nice crispy flavor. Of course, since I'm vegan, we don't eat chicharrones in my house, so I went ahead and got some quinoa and kale Cheeto puffs. 
They have a really nice crispy, airy bite to them, just like a chicharron would. So that's the texture we're gonna go with today. So all we have to do here is take some of our plantains, clove of garlic. The salt is gonna help really grind all this together. I'm just gonna start smashing my plantains and that garlic all together. I'm adding in some of my last plantains and mashing here. So now I'm gonna start adding in some of those quinoa and kale Cheeto-like puffs. So our mofongo is all mashed together in our mocajete. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start working on our cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and get the cheese out of the Pyrex dish, just like that. I'm gonna cut it into some slices to use for our mofongo. Now the longer it sets, guys, the firmer it's gonna get. So I think that's all I'll need, about half of the block that I made. So our loaded mofongo is ready. I just pulled it out of the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and start by packing a large cereal bowl full of my mofongo mixture. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bowl, I'm gonna place a larger bowl on top of my bowl of mofongo. I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna give it a little love tap. So it's the best part of any cooking video. We get to taste our food now. Our loaded mofongo with a little sprinkle of cilantro and avocado. I'm gonna just dive in. You guys, this is gonna be a recipe that you go to and make over and over again. If you're not familiar with Caribbean food, please let this be one of your first recipes to introduce you. You will not be disappointed. Thank you guys again so much for joining me here in my kitchen to make our loaded mofongo with our sin carne mixture and our golden cheddar. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe and like so that you can see more vegan cooking videos in the future. Bye guys, thank you so much.